Praise the Lord, everybody. It is Sunday morning worship service, and we come to edify the Lord on this morning and give him all the honor and the praise that is due his name. On today, we have with us from the Timber Lake, our minister of music, that will lead us into praise on this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the day that you have blessed us with. We just thank you, Lord, because you rise us up out of our sleep and our slumber. Lord, you allowed us to see another Sunday morning, and we give you the honor and the praise for that. Now, Lord, we ask you that you forgive us of all our sins and unrighteousness, Lord, that we be able to lift up your name in spirit and in truth, Lord, and give you all the praise that is due you. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we ask him, Lord, as we go into your word, Lord, that you would touch in us and our spirit, Lord, that we be able to preach, Lord, and that those that are hearing, Lord, would be able to hear and be doers of your word, not only as hearers of your word, but doers of your word. And Father, we just thank you and we're asking that you forgive us of all our sins and unrighteousness again, Lord, that we be able, Lord, to hear a word from you on this morning and be a shining light unto a dying world. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be here with you long, but I just want to bring as a subject on this morning an elephant in the room. This is a term that the world usually uses, an elephant in the room. And we will be coming out of Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. And we use as our text in verse 28. Then Jesus said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And thy daughter was made whole from that very hour. I'm just here this morning to let you know that there are some things that we're going to have to deal with in this in in our life, and that term or that expression that an elephant is in the room, it is an expression, uh, usually a metaphorical idiom in our English language for an important or enormous topic, a question or controversial issue that obviously or that everyone knows about, but nobody wants to talk about or discuss or make at least some of them uncomfortable, either personal, socially, political, embarrassing, or controversial, inflammatory, or dangerous. Our nation are facing many different decisions or situations at this time that we are living in. There are things that are going on that are just not right. There are things in our own homes, in our community, in our churches that we don't want to talk about. And there's an elephant in the room. There is even an elephant out here as we are preaching. The sun is shining and we all are very, uh, getting to get hot. That's the elephant in our room that we have in the parking lot. We don't want to talk about it, but we got some things in our life that we're going to have to deal with on an individual basis as well as a nation. We got to talk about it. Some things are going to make you feel uncomfortable. Some things are going to make you feel shameful, or make you want to hang your head because you don't want nobody to talk about it. But the healing process can't begin until you start dealing with the elephant that is in your room. Oftentimes we want to criticize our government. We want to criticize our politicians. We want to criticize our doctors, our lawyers. We want to criticize the very policemen. We want to criticize our governor. But what about the elephant that is in your room? What about the things that you are doing that ain't quite right? Well, I'm here this morning to let you know what you got to do with those situations or those problems that we have in life that we seemingly have no control over. It. They seemingly to be in our room and have control over us to the point that it makes us want to be quiet and not talk about it. Many a times we have preached this sermon, this very sermon. I think the last time we preached, we preached about the man that had a son that was a lunatic. Well, this morning we're going to preach about a daughter that has a problem. Nobody wants to preach about or talk about those problems that we have, that those deep-rooted, seated problems that we have that are keeping us away from God, that is pulling our attentions away from where it needs to be. Nobody wants to talk about it. But I'm here this morning to talk about some things. Matthew 15 and 21, it says, Jesus went thence, and he departed unto the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman from Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Right after Jesus had to deal with the other sicknesses around and he had healed folks and uh, his fame had went abroad 
And so people were seeking Jesus because they knew that he had the answer to their problem. The problem we are having right now as a church, the problem we are having right now as a nation or as in the city of Oxford, how many people are actually seeking Jesus for this issue that we have? COVID-19 is on the rise and racial tensions is on the rise and we're dealing with the political issues of, of defunding our policemen and we're, we're dealing with uh, other issues within our nation, within our counties. We're dealing with many different issues that we haven't seek, sought Jesus about. We're trying to fix it on our own. But this morning, uh, this woman had got tired of her situation. She looked for help. And one thing I wanted you to understand this morning, that even though you have an elephant in the room with your situation of some problem you have brought right into the problem, like some problem that's sitting right in the cars with you, and when you go home, you're gonna have to face that problem. I want you to understand this morning that if we can give it to Jesus, he can deal with that elephant in your room. If we give it to Jesus, he can deal with that situation or that problem or that mindset that you might have that's keeping you separated from God and keeping you separated from each other and keep you hating on one another simply because you won't give it to Jesus. But Jesus can fix it. That's an old song. If Jesus can't fix it, nobody can. So we need to seek Jesus in the time that we're living in. Stop trying to fix it on our own. Stop looking for ways that of our own knowledge and understanding to fix certain things. Stop thinking that you can handle it. And some things in life we can't handle, we gotta give it to God. And this one thing that we know that we're dealing with this virus and racial tensions and, and other issues that are going on in our, in our society right now, we can't handle those situations. We got to give it to God. Do you not know that the devil lay wait? He lay wait and he wait for you to make the wrong decisions because he know the outcome and he know that he come to steal, kill, and destroy and he's not playing a game. He's trying to separate you from God. We got to get back to seeking Jesus. There are some of our leaders that are not seeking Jesus. They are coming up with their own answer out of their own heart. They are concerned. They are not concerned about the people in the United States. Whether it be domestic problems or national problems. When our leaders do not seek Jesus for the answer or look towards God's word for the answer or take godly counsel then the people of God have to pay for it, or the people in the nation have to pay for it. Many different issues we have arising, it seems like it's one issue after another. Just pay attention. In the last three or four months, it seems like it has been one issue after another that is affecting Americans, that is affecting the world. When are we gonna get as a people as a nation, start seeking the word of God. Start going back into the word of God to, so that God can either keep us through the season of that or so that he can turn it around for us and make it for our good. Instead of coming up with things to divide our nation or our people or the city of Oxford, instead of coming up with things to divide, when are we gonna get together and come into unity and push the elephant out of the room? The elephant is not a political epithet. The elephant is a problem or a situation that you have. The elephant ain't the white man or the black man or the Hispanic man. The elephant is some situation that is in your room, you know it's there, but you seemingly can't fix it. And if you give it enough time, he'll start pushing you out the room. And this is what is happening. The elephant has began to push us apart from each other. Began to divide. Began to dissect us on religious lines, us on political lines, us on, us on uh, persuasion lines. 
So we have to pay attention to what the woman did. She sought counsel from Jesus. She came down and she told him about her problem. Now, I want you to understand that because of who she was and her mindset, Jesus made her go through a little something just to prove where her, just to see where her mind was. And sometimes we have to go through a little something in an individual household in our, as a nation just to see where we at. And that's one thing I said on last Sunday that I'm glad about. I believe it was last Sunday or Wednesday during the taping that I'm glad about the COVID-9 and these racial tension. It really showed who was who. It really brought out who was with you and who won't with you. It really brought out that we need to get on our knees and start praying and crying out to the Lord or we turn away and walk away from God. How many of people have walked away from God during this season that we are in? How many of people have turned, uh, turned their nose up and walked away from you during this season that we are in? Simply because we won't really with each other. It takes a God to fix our situation and our problem. The president can't fix our problem. The governor can't fix our problem. The senators and congressmen can't fix our problem. And many times they are the very problem that need to be fixed. I'm not just coming down on them, I'm coming down on myself too. On yesterday, we went to a place to where we had to park our cars and to an eating place. And I pulled in, I saw a car, they was out the car, and I pulled around them and got in the line. And the lady approached me. She said, what are you doing? I said, excuse me? She said, I was in line. I said, ma'am, your doors was open and y'all was out your car. She said, but we was in line. I said, I didn't know that. So what you doing? I said, ma'am, I don't have time to argue with you. I'll tell you what you do. You pull your van right on up to where I am, and I'll just leave. And I pulled off to keep the argument down. We're arguing and bickering and fighting. Everybody's on the edge about a hamburger. <laughs> That's an elephant in the room. And we fighting against one another about a hamburger or what line we was in. To keep the argument down, I left. I hope the hamburger tastes real good. But I saw the elephant in the room. I'm not talking about the lady, I'm talking about the situation, the problem that had arised. I don't know if I was the problem or she was the problem, but I fixed the problem by leaving. There are things in our life that we're gonna have to walk away from that's causing us to be on the edge. As the scripture said, the forefathers have eaten sour grapes and the children, teeth are on the edge. Our teeth is on the edge about things that, that we are allowing to happen in our lives and we're refusing to leave. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna argue with you. I'm gonna fuss and fight with you when we don't have to fuss and fight. We need to be seeking Jesus in the season that we're in. We don't have time to be arguing and bickering about different things that are going on. We need to be seeking Jesus. We need to be reading the word of God. We need to be praising him. We need to fall down at our feet, at his feet, and start admonishing him so that he can move in our lives instead of fighting and bickering about one another. Twenty fifth verse says, twenty fourth verse says, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he's acknowledging that she's a devil, or she's not of the faith. He said, I didn't come here for you. That's like on yesterday. I didn't come there for the lady. I came there to get me a hamburger and go home. <laughs> So I saw that was in jeopardy, so I just went on home and went to another hamburger place. So he's telling her, I didn't come here for you and your problems. 
I came here to save my brothers and my sisters. And so her answer is, is so ironic that he's somewhat scolding her. Let me tell you what she did. The 25th verse says, Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. I understand that I ain't where I'm supposed to be in life. I understand that I might not be saved, but I need your help in this stressing time that I'm in. Lord, I'm going to worship you because I need you in this time of situation of this problem that I'm in. Lord, nobody else can help me but you. So I need your help and I'm pleading with you. So many times that's what we need to do. We need to fall and worship God and then plead our case. We know we done done wrong. There's none righteous but one. The only one, the only reason you are righteous out here in this parking lot and at home and on Facebook and YouTube is because of the blood of Jesus. It's not because of things that you have done that made you righteous. It's because of the blood of Jesus that cleansed us from all our unrighteousness. So we need to bow down and start worshiping him. Stop acting like we know everything. She could have had the attitude. Said, man, I ain't talking to you no more. I wanted your help, but because you done messed with me and said what you said, I'm just gonna roll off. And her daughter would still be in the same predicament that she was in. Most of us here are running from something. We got some problem in our house. We got some problem in our community. We got some problems in our own head. There's an elephant in the room. We need to fall down and worship God. I said, Lord, I need your help. The songwriter said, Lord, 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 I need you to help me. We need to cry out to him in the problems that we have. I said, Lord, I need your help. The problem I have with our nation, we so, we so entangled on political lines. We so entangled on religious lines. We so entangled on racial lines that nobody is really asking God for help with these issues. Everybody has the answer. And it seems to me, maybe I'm just an ignorant preacher. Maybe you know more, know better than I know, but it seems to me everything is going downhill. Nothing is calming down. Every week is something else on racial lines, on political lines, on religious lines. There's a divisive spirit in the land that we cannot come together because we are not all in a unity in seeking God for the answer. So this lady saw it. Jesus said something to her that she made it in life. But instead of getting mad, she fell down and worshiped him. You see, she worshiped him in spite of what he said. She, she worshiped him in spite of who he was. She worshiped him in spite of her own uh, super, uh, 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 spirituality. She bowed down and worshiped him and asked him for help. John 10 and 10 said, the thief coming, not but to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Evidently she had heard him speak or she had heard about what he came to do to heal the sick and to raise the dead, to cast out demons. To open the blinded eyes. To allow the ones that are deaf to hear. Evidently she heard about that. And she said, well, this is the man that I need to see. We as a nation is continually not to believe in Christ. And this is a trick of the enemy. That we don't believe in Christ. We think we can go to the doctor. We think we can put a mask on and fix it. 
That's not, that's just a bad name. We need a true healing from God. The fixed things in our lives. The one that was here in the beginning. The one that was that was here in the middle of it. The one that shall be here in the end. We need a healing from God. Not put a bandage on it. Free. The dictionary says that at this core is a deep rooted in an expectation of good things to come. It goes beyond hope. While such hope lies in the in the mind, faith is a step in the heart and the spirit. While life can be hard at the as, as best of times, faith is the knowledge deep down inside that things are going to get better. This is the dictionary definition. She had faith even though she wasn't a part of the faith group. She had enough faith to know that Jesus could make it better. That the elephant in her room could move when Jesus was to come in. She had enough faith to know that if Jesus could touch her, then that his, her daughter would be all right. She must have been around the man that had a son that was a lunatic and he got all right. So she went back home and said, I'm gonna bring my daughter. <laughs> Maybe Jesus can heal her. He did it for the man that had a son that was a lunatic. And then verse 26 it said, I'm, over, I'm almost finished. But he answered and said, after she fell down and worshiped him, he answered and said, it is not me to take the children bread and to cast it to dogs. So Jesus called a woman a dog. Huh? I want you to know that she wasn't deterred because of this. This was just a trial that Jesus, Jesus was already going to heal the, the young lady. But he wanted to know where her mind was. Jesus already know that there's a healing for you out there. But he wanted to know where your mind is. He allowed you to go through some things in life just to figure out where you is. Are you going to be with me? Or are you just here because of the two fishes and five loaves? You just here for the blessing. Are you going to be with me in the hard time? Are you going to be with me in the difficult time? Or are you just here just to sing a song? And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat crumbs which fall from the master's table. She said, I don't want this. I, I, I'm not asking for great blessings. I'm not, I, I'm not asking for anything for myself. I'm asking that the crumbs that fall from the table, that I be able to eat from them. I'm asking for a touch from you, Lord for my daughter, not for myself, so that my house can be blessed. Then Jesus said in verse 28, then Jesus said unto her, O woman, great, great, after he called a dog now, I just want you to get an understanding of how God works. Just because he hasn't done what you ask for them right now, and you seem to happen to go through and eat the crumbs that's falling from other folks' table. Just because you're having difficult times in your life, just because there is an elephant or some problem or situation in your house, on your job, at your church, with your kids, it don't mean that God don't have a blessing around the corner for you. You got to stay down and continue to work with him and have conversations. It takes more than just throwing a prayer at God. It takes more than just coming to church and throwing a few dollars in the plate. It takes more than saying, I'm gonna pray for you. You got to be having a conversation with the Lord. You got to learn how to be intimate with God. You got to learn to, to, to give him all your life. Give him all that you got. Because he's given you that which comes from him. So, he said, oh great, oh woman, great is thy faith. 
be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. I want you to understand something here that as we close, that he didn't go down and he didn't anoint her with oil. He didn't go and lay hands on her daughter. You see, he didn't tell us that, reach in his pocket and pull out a couple of dollars and say, go take her to the psychiatrist, maybe they can help. He didn't say, go and show her to the physician. He said, be it as thou wilt. Whatever you ask me for, it had already happened. He didn't have to go where the daughter was. He was already in the room with the elephant watching you, seeing what, what she was gonna do. I'm just trying to get you to get beyond the physical aspect of church. Get in the spiritual aspect of church. It ain't always where you gotta go and where you are, but it is who you with. Many of us have an elephant in the room, but Jesus can grant you his peace. He can grant you his spirit and allow you to receive that heavenly healing that is only be, can only be spoken by you. If you really think about it, our nation is going through whatever it's going through and all the things that it's going through because we are not with God. We as individuals make up a nation and we have to follow and worship God if we really want to bring unity. The problem is we got to allow the Holy Spirit or God to deal with our hearts to get this trifling, to get this fightful attitude that we have that we wish that people were dead and out of our way. We got to stop praying for our, I know you don't like it, our president. We got to continue to pray for our congressmen, our senators, our policemen, our governors. We got to continue to pray for them. We got to continue to pray for one another. Even the ones that are mistreating us, we got to continue to pray for them to get that elephant out of the room. So that Christ can say, after he done trials by the fire, so that he can say, be as thou wilt. In the very hour, the daughter was made whole. In the very hour, God can give you that which you seek. But until you get yourself out of the way, your selfish ambition, your selfish attitude out of the way and recognize that there is an elephant in your room. You need to recognize that you need to give it to Christ. Before we bring our prayer, we're going to ask Sister Timothy if she would to sing us another song. God is calling for something different out of our lives. He is expecting something different. You can't come. The word tells us to come boldly to the throne, asking what we will. But we got to have a form of humility. And this is what she had, a form of humility.
forgive them in the pardon of their sins, Lord. Many are standing at the crossroads of life, Lord, seeking you, Lord. We ask the Lord right now that you give them direction, Lord, on which way to go, Lord. Lord, we ask the Lord that you relieve this power lot on this morning, Lord, that your spirit will go forth and go with us, Lord. And we speak blessings over your people, Lord, that have come out this morning, Lord. We ask the Lord that you continue to bless them, Lord. Bless them in their minds, Lord. Bless them in their health, Lord. Bless them in their finances, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling. We speak blessings over your life. And we tell you at this point in time to go in the mercies of God and worship him every day of your life. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Go in peace. Love y'all. Thank you.